So today we're going to look at this, which is a aftermarket reverse camera kit for my Ford Fiesta 18 plates. And um, the cool thing about this is it should work with the built-in SYNC 3 um, entertainment without an external display or anything. So uh, let's have a look at what comes in the box. I have already opened this once, so it's a bit of a mess. Install instructions. Foam. Return form for the programmer. So the OBD2 programmer that tells the uh, tells the infotainment that it has a rear camera, I suppose. Then there's this nice loom here, which I assume this end goes to the camera, and this end must plug into something at the head unit end. And there's a um, circuit board there. And then there's this. Which is the new tailgate switch. So, camera. Camera, number plate lights, and uh, tailgate open. Pretty simple. Right, first things first. Let's go program the car. Okay, so we're in the car. Full of the instructions. Full power mode is, is on. Take programmer. Insert into OBD2 port. And look at the radio screen. Insert the programmer. Wait for the radio to fully restart. Show the normal radio screen. And the programmer beeps. Switch the ignition off and remove the programmer and then close the car door, lock the vehicle. Ignition off, remove programmer, close the car door and lock the vehicle. Okay, so it's been 30 seconds. Let's get back in the vehicle. Everything seems okay. I'm not the vehicle, start the engine. Clutch down. This looks good. Everything looks normal. Select reverse gear. So it seems that the head unit, or the infotainment, whatever you want to call it, has been programmed correctly. So the next stage would be to pop off the small panels that cover up the mounting screws, or mounting bolts, for the infotainment and for the dash. I've already got one off, just using some plastic tools. Showing exactly what the uh, photographs from the guide show. And for this piece, I just levered under there on one side. Nice and gently. I don't want to damage my plastics. There we go. And this piece should just, yeah, look at that, easy. On the tailgate, just get your tool and shove it in there until the panel physically comes away. There you go. You get a situation like this, where the clip has remained in the body panel and not, not in the plastic. Just get a tool like this. See if I can do this one-handed. 
Glide it underneath, put your thumb on it, and pull it out. Easy. And I'd probably suggest putting it back in the panel, because if you're like me, you'll forget. And with some persisting, that panel came off. Another thing worth mentioning is I'm trying to fit this there. And you can see on each side there is a clip, or a, a springy clip. The first one can be accessed there, and the second one can be accessed just through there. You see it? And the third, through that hole, and the fourth, well, I don't think you can press out the fourth, but with three out it should just fall out. After a bit of a fight that came out, and I did bend one clip. Luckily this is the part not going back in the car, so it doesn't really matter. So we're back in the front of the car, and I removed this bolt here, and this bolt here. And to do this I had to remove the decorative surround, surround, this decorative surround. I just have to remove the sink screen next. Okay, so back again. After a long, long fight, I finally managed to remove the plastic cowling. Notice the air vent on the driver's side does also come out. It's a bit scary. I didn't like the idea of doing it either. I think I might have dropped a clip in there somewhere, but it looks okay for the minute. It's interesting seeing how they, uh, even though this is all behind the panelling, they left that piece in there, I guess, for structural. Um, removing the sink screen was quite easy. Just whip out those three bolts. Unplug the HSD cable. There's a clip here just on the back that you've got to watch out for. Get a screwdriver in there and hit the release clip. Then that was the, uh, I assume this is Lin and power for the buttons on the screen. And then this small one here is for the start stop button, which you have to unclip to. So just playing or removing the clocks or the, uh, the dash now. There are two Torx screws that need to come out here and here. And then I found the best method is to put your fingers here and here and just push the screen down and it unclips like that. Okay, so I pulled out the dash or the connector and just move all this one out. And then carefully, I have no idea how this comes out of here. Figure this out in a minute. Okay, so to remove that, you have to twist it to the side and then pull it out through this gap. It will come out, don't worry. And below there is the sink unit, apparently. And that's the connector, I can see it now. That's the one we've got to remove. Okay, so what I've done, there's the sink box down there. And this is the aftermarket loom that the camera, the guy that bought the camera provided. There's this little box. And this is the, right buried in this little gap is the adapter. So that's the Ford loom, that's the aftermarket loom. Just plugged in there and there's a nice hole or recess there for it to all be tucked out of the way, out of the way there. Um, I might use some cable ties like, to secure this. The one problem with tucking it away is you've got to make sure this cable isn't stressed too much because it's cabled, it's felt taped to the original. Apart from that, it looks pretty good. Just as a little tour, main plate, main connector, I don't know what this is, another connector couple of looks like an HSD there perhaps that's going to the screen and there's another small Fakra there I'm not sure what that's doing anyway that's tucked out of the way there this is where the instrument cluster sits in a minute I'm gonna plug this all back in and uh, pray to god my car still works right so I've installed that module have you seen in the last clip and I put everything back loosely so that's dash is back and plugged in I've yet to tidy this up. This is the little supply voltage thing that comes with that T adapter. I popped out the engine start stop button and just plugged that in and I put the forward screen back in. I've just used that little hook there to hold it in. So it's a bit wobbly, but we, we're not going to touch it. We just want to see if the camera comes on. I've quickly just snaked the cable around the back and plugged it in so we can see if it works. So let's put it in reverse gear. Boom, look at that, perfect. And one thing that I think is actually quite nice is you can just see the ends of the car. So this camera is almost perfectly aligned. 
So at some point I'm going to have to practice reversing into wheelie bins to uh, make sure everything is where I think it is in my head. Now that line there, that's actually the number plate. I've placed it about a metre and a half away from the back of the car. So perhaps that gives you an idea as to how well this thing will reverse. I'm not sure what this button does. Apparently okay, nothing. Another update on what I've done. I've removed this, the um, dash again, or the instrument cluster. and. I very carefully tucked that box just out of the way there and run the cabling along here and for the minute it's just coming out through the air vent. This way I can reinstall the dash and reinstall all the other little bits and hopefully it should let me get onto the next stage of wiring the cable to the back of the car. So just about to fit the, um, the carbon fibre effect trim back in. Now, I didn't show removing this because there wasn't a hell of a lot of information that I could share with you, but now I've got it removed, I can show you what all the trim parts are that you're going to need to use. Uh, you're going to need to apply pressure there. So, there, 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 one at the back there, here, 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 there, and obviously you have to remove those two bolts. And there's a couple of weird ones around the edges there too. I've lost one in the car, but... Hopefully it won't be too annoying. I've also put the button back, the start stop button back in. Interesting to note, you can't see it on camera, but they've actually used a conductive grease on there to stop oxidization. Oxidation of the contacts even. I must have really wanted to start. Presented it up. I've made sure the wires aren't trapped underneath. I'm just gonna go around and try and snap it in one-handedly. I've also plugged in the uh, cable for that. Don't forget that for God's sake. Sounding good, doesn't it? And then along the edge here. I'll use a little bit of force to make sure all the clips are located. After this, and just give it a, after it's back in, give it a good good wiggle. And I think that's pretty pretty easily back in there. Just have to reinstall the uh, Decorative surround around here, and that's up there, and um, put the sink screen back in Hi again. So after about half an hour of struggling, I finally managed to get this protective shroud, uh, decorative shroud thing in place. By far the most painful part of the job, and if you look, there's a few tiny nicks. Apart from that, though, it doesn't look too bad. But it's worth taking the time to do it properly because this is the part you're going to see for like the, le the rest of your time owning this vehicle. Okay, so everything's back to normal more, more or less. I've just fitted this piece here and put my steering wheel back up to a normal height and uh, fitted that piece on the back. And that concludes the work on the front of the car. Now we just have to route the cable round to the uh, rear tailgate. So to run the cable to the back of the car I've run it down here, up the door seal on the inside, all the way up, all the way up through here, where's my finger, all the way through here. This is an interesting part here, from the door seal to the trim. So I managed to get the cable to the grommet now, and how I did that was I ran the cable up to this point here, just tuck, it's just tucked in there, along here, and I pulled this out here. And then using a screwdriver and a pair of pliers, I very, very carefully drew the cable through. Actually quite easy when you think about it. Okay, so just finished fitting this. It was quite difficult. This is actually quite unwieldy to get through this tube. To pop this out, you need to remember on the top here, there's a latch thing. So you need to pop that first before you try and yank it out. And on the bottom, they're here, here, and on the other side, and the top is there and there. So once you've got that through, just pull the cable through, and then we need to get it from here, up here somewhere. This shouldn't be so hard, hopefully. Okay, so I've managed to get the cable up here from the grommet pass-through, not sure what it's called, and um, just trails it along here, up the, uh, the side, along here, to this area. That's the camera feed. Um, one interesting thing I've discovered while doing this, certainly in the back of this car, there's an awful lot of masking tape on the loom. 
Now that's not unexpected after all these things come from somewhere, but I'm curious why almost every single piece seems to be pre-ripped. Like, what's the story with that? Even up the sides here, it's all ripped already. Okay, so I've tied up the rest of that excess cabling and I've tucked it away out here. That's the uh, camera cable. And that's the loom to the, um, the rest of the vehicle. What I've also done, as you can see here, it's not a great angle, but I've wrapped the connector in PVC tape to make sure it doesn't come undone while in the vehicle. And um, I've got a horrible feeling this PVC tape will go all sticky and yucky, but I haven't got anything else on hand and hopefully I won't be re revisiting this. But uh, I thought that was worth mentioning too. Now I can put on the rest of the plastics and hopefully put this all back the way it was supposed to be before. So I've just put the retaining clips back on this and banged it into place. Well, tapped it gently with the hammer, and um, it's looking really good. And um, that's it, all installed. You wouldn't even know, would you?